Hello everyone, it is January 11th, 2022. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! Welcome to this week's episode, this first episode of 2022. So, a little over a week ago, I sat down to have a conversation about goals and, and process and lots of good things uh, with Victoria at Talking Harps, and that video has just been published. I invite you to go check that out. And tying in with that idea of the new year and setting goals, as you can see from that conversation, I'm not a huge believer in, in a huge focus on goals. I'd, I'd much rather focus on the process of doing something. But one type of goal setting I can really get behind is the idea of a daily goal, of trying to do something that you want to become a habit, that you want to not have to think about, am I going to do this today, but that it becomes automatic. If you're trying to do that, one of the best ways is to set a goal of trying to get a check mark every day of, of, of doing that, right? Of, of just to repeat, repeatedly do something. And so what I want to offer to you today is a simple little exercise that takes about a minute to do, under a minute maybe, but that I think is really helpful and could be a great goal for you for your harp practice this year. So it's just a practice of chords and chord shapes. So. I'll play, I'll play it for you. I'm going to play a root position chord in both hands. I'm going to go up one octave. And come back down again. I'm not worried about being particularly fast. Then I'm going to do a first inversion shape. So these are all first inversion chord shapes. Back down again. And a second inversion chord shape. And that's it, right? So uh, under a minute and a great way to start to build an automatic awareness of those chord shapes if you if that's something that is not quite automatic for you yet so let's i mean that's all there is to it but let me break it down just a little bit so as i say we're starting with a root position chord shape <clears throat> we don't have to we can start with any of the chord shapes but let's start with a root position chord shape because i think that's the one that tends to be most familiar and that's where for example if we're starting on c it's c e g right we c skip play, skip, play, very symmetrical. Both hands playing the same chord an octave apart. And as we play this, there are two things I'd like to focus on, right? One is the idea of being able to move up and away from the string. So I'll link to a video I did many, many years ago about arm and wrist movement, but basically that we can hinge a little bit at the wrist and swivel a little bit from the elbow so the elbow doesn't drop, but we just go up a little bit, move up and away, and that, I think, sometimes feels a little bit scary, potentially, that we tend to maybe want to stay close to the string so we know where we are. But to just start to build that sense that it's okay to move away from the strings a little bit and then come right back down. And as you start to go back down, that idea of opening the fingers, and this is really, really important, right, to find the shape in the air that you're going to play. So I like to think that if I found the shape in the air, I have the sense of this shape, if somebody were to take my arm and guide it and place a finger on the string. Oh, I didn't quite get it. My third finger needs to go out a little bit. That I would be able to, you, you know, just that, that hand shape would be accurate in the air. And is it completely accurate? I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's pretty close, right? From so many years of playing. And that's, I think, what you really want to try to develop so that you're not playing and then right at the last minute trying to find the strings. Then instead we play, we open up the fingers and we drop down the strings, having found that chord shape. And that's it, right? So we go up and we go down because, of course, I think kinesthetically it feels a little bit different going down, even though we're just repeating the same chords that we had before. And then we do a first inversion shape, and that's where C, skip, E, skip, skip. We're skipping two strings between one and two. Right? So in this case, C, E, A, it's an A chord, this first one A minor in this case, but an A first inversion. 
than a B first inversion. The name of the chord is always whatever string the thumb is on, a C first inversion, D, no first inversion, one, a certain um, uh, nice symmetry there, etc. And again, we'll go back down again. Again, taking as much time as you want, right? It's not worrying about speed, we're just worrying about finding that shape in the air and then dropping down. And then, of course, the second inversion is where we skip two strings between three and two. So C, skip, skip, F, skip, A. And in this case, the second inversion, whatever string that two is on is the name of the chord. You don't have to worry about the name of the chord. That's kind of like extra credit or whatever. If you want to, you could be saying F chord, G chord, A chord. You could do that sometimes. You could do it never. Um, it is nice to be aware of the name of the chord, but I think the focus here is just a short thing to do under a minute that builds that kinesthetic awareness of the chord shape. So we go up, etc., and then back down again. And, and there you go. Um, let me offer you maybe three modifications to play around with. One is try playing with your eyes closed, right? Again, to feel that maybe it is possible to come very far away from the strings, and then could you, did I get there? I did, excellent. Felt really scary. I think this one felt more secure. Yeah, I'm feeling good. To see if you could build, uh, again, it, it may be that you miss it completely. Um, we have no nothing to hang on to, but just that kinesthetic awareness of, of coming back to one string higher. Again, finding the shape in the air and a way to sort of remove the visual stimulus and, and just concentrate on the, the physical awareness of the body and the hands and the fingers. That can be something to play around with, not every day, but just if you feel like shaking it up a little bit. If it feels as if just doing, say, root position is, is really quite challenging and it's maybe taking you a minute just to do that, that's great. Maybe do root position for a week and then first inversion for a week and then second inversion for a week and then back to root position until the point where it feels fine to do all three of them and if it feels really easy or if it starts to become really easy you could try to do four note chord shapes so root position you might find depending on the size of your heart maybe you need to instead of playing an octave apart maybe play a third apart so they'll be different there's a c chord this is an e chord different chords But again, just such such great practice for finding shapes in the air and starting to make these chord shapes be so automatic and built in. So I hope that was useful. I hope that gives you some ideas to maybe bring to your practice here in 2022. And I will see you in two weeks for another episode of Harp Tuesday.